my relationship with Tannenbaum begins during my IBM tenure. As the business community started to dabble in discussions about faith, Tannenbaum was one of the creditable organizations that you could you could have a discussion about faith, you could invite them into your workplace and not have disruption follow their presence. And you could have a reasonably thought-provoking discussion that enabled people to think and talk in a way that was not going to provoke conflict, but was going to take into consideration that there are issues of conflict associated with faith. And it was a, it was so creditable that it kind of drew you in to want to know more and to have a stronger relationship with them. I think the risk for companies who ignore the global issue of, issue of religion right. is loss of talent, loss of marketplace access. And the ultimate deal there is then your ability to survive. I had created a group uh, on the, within, within the diversity team um, that included people from each of our three geographies, the Americas, Asia Pacific, and EMEA, person from the employee relations staff, person from the legal staff. And I had told them that you're our multicultural team. Right. And I want you to be able to, on rather quick notice, be able to inspect any faith or culture anywhere in the world when an issue coming from that community starts to affect us. Well, they came right back and said, look, we found out that in heavily Muslim countries, they have in the bathrooms built into the floors uh, facilities for people to bathe their feet. I said, do that in Minnesota and do it in Canada, where we also had a challenge. Do it right away. Bill it to my department, but this is, this is a game breaker in terms of us stepping up to something that we see is unavoidable because we're employing more and more of these people. They're moving into the Rochester community. They're going to work for us, and we need to make sure that we're welcoming them. I got letters from people, Americans, telling me I'm very proud to work for a company that would be this sensitive to our new colleagues and respecting what their values and their culture are. Now, in a different situation, a young woman was interviewed for a job. She had a master's degree in computer science. She was interviewed 2001 during the summer. Because she was Muslim, she wore the Muslim dress, including cover for her face. And between her interview, interviewed by two levels of management, deeply impressed with her, offered her a job. But between the time she was offered and accepted the job and reported for work, there was an incident. You and I know it as 9-11. So she shows up for work. One of the first things that happens on your, on your first day of work is you get your security badge with a picture. She shows up to have her picture taken, and the security guard who takes the pictures asks her to remove her veil. She says, I can't do that. He says, oh, yeah, sure you can, just for a minute while I snap your picture. He's not thinking the conflict he's causing for her. She, uh, she says, no, sir, I can't. He says, well, I can't take your picture if you won't remove your veil. She says, sir, I can't be seen by a man un un unveiled. I'm sorry, but I must decline. And he says, well, then I decline to take your picture. Now, that comes to my attention right away. I asked that multicultural team, okay, I need help here. need it quickly. They come back, and I say, by the way, in your... In your um, inspection of this situation, I want you to look at this through the lens of this young lady because she's been interviewed by two levels of management at IBM. They didn't see her face, but they inspected her credentials and concluded that she was worthy of being offered a job here that could be the beginning of a 30-year relationship. So I'm looking at this through her eyes. You've got to come back to me with an answer that's satisfactory to answering the challenge that she's been confronted with because we're not asking her to violate that. They came back with an answer. They said, look, we have, we have uncovered a solution. First of all, the person who takes the picture is going to be a woman. 
Secondly, she's going to have two security badges. She's going to have one with her veil. She's going to have that she will wear that badge whenever she's in the workplace. The second badge will be without the veil. She won't have to wear it. She will carry it in her, in her on her person. If anyone challenges that she says she's who she says she is, then a woman manager will take her into an office. She can remove the veil. She can show the other badge, validate who she is. The day will go on. Now, and I said, that's fine. Let's, let's proceed. We're going to have challenges like that. We need to have the flexibility intellectually to find ways to solve problems. Because that young lady, that's isolated. It's real. It's an indication of things to come, just like the situation in Rochester or the situation in, um, in Toronto. But we're going to have more people from cultures that have not previously been here in the numbers that they are. And we've got to be able to attract this talent. We need this talent. And we don't want to offend people. We don't want to lose access to the talent. And we don't want to lose access to the customers that we would turn away if we don't treat people from their culture with fairness. When it comes back to the core issue of the relevance in corporate diversity and inclusion, I think that the relevance may be linked to, to the concept of survival, that this thing may be so forceful that our inability to keep it in front of us and have meaningful, thoughtful, non-conflict challenging discussions may ultimately define whether we're able to survive in the context of business or whether our inability to have meaningful discussions is going to close us off from talented groups of people that we really we need their talent in our workplace but we can't have it because we can't have their beliefs in our workplace and if we are cut off from talent then we are cut off from customers that's a revenue impact and that's a big deal.